I, I don't even know his name again. Micaeus the Lunark. Micaeus the Lunark. Uh, four Hero of the Bladehold, four Honor of the Pure, four Intangible Virtue, three Dismember, four Midnight Haunting, which is Spectra Procession, or a version of Spectra Procession, but they have flying, four Elspeth Terrell, four Shrine of Loyal Legions, and three Day Judgment. Yeah. He smashed a White Weenie deck earlier today, like just smashed it. Yeah, Elspeth seems pretty awesome. Token Town is what we've been calling this deck. To and, I like Token Town. And uh, we're off to the races. Andrew with no turn one play, Brian uh, opting for a Ponder. Now that's a card, first time we've seen Ponder cast today. Um, Finally going to see some shuffling, <laughs> as he does here on the first turn. You know, I just realized this. We've seen almost no shuffling. We've seen a couple surgical extractions. Oh, yeah, there isn't, there isn't like it is, like it was. It's so much better. Wizards has actively been trying to reduce the amount of shuffling in the game because it takes up so much time. Oh, yeah. Brian Kibler uh, comment, like, saw this, and he thought it was the funniest thing ever. At the Pro Tour, all four, all four people at his table... Or all eight, all four matches at the table, everyone was shuffling. <laughs> all decks were being shuffled at the same time. That's hilarious. And down uh, comes turn two drop. I think is that. That's is that Micaeus? I think that's Micaeus the Lunar. It doesn't look like Micaeus. It's got a no. counter on it though. It's Shrine. Oh, Shrine. Okay. You just put it where the creatures would go. Sure. So yeah. sh Shrine down with a counter on it. Also has. The where do you put your Shrine? Off to the side. Really? Yeah. That's where artifacts go. I don't know where I mean, I'm, I'm not crazy like Paulo. Paulo, I don't put my lands in front of my creatures. <laughs> he's got to be the best player that does that. <laughs> well, he's got. Uh, I mean, he, he it's, it's not anywhere. hard when you're like yeah. you know one of the top. When five he is players. the best player in the world. Uh, All right, Geist comes yeah. down. Th now that's a card. Once again, people have talked about Geist of Saint Traff. Like, might be played somewhere, but we've seen that card over and over and over again today. That All right. Hot, so hot I card. think uh, Midnight Hauntings. Uh, getting cast right now, giving Andrew two spirit tokens. And they both are holding trophies. Best kind of spirit tokens to hold. Alright, and I think he's able to play a hero if he wants to. Yeah, I'm really surprised. Shrine seems like a very powerful card in this format. Um, Shrine of Loyal Legions. Uh, there's not a lot of removal for these cards, and uh, it just ticks up for a long time. These blue-black control decks are trying to generate all this card advantage. Well, sure, you try to whittle me down with your Liliana and your Think Twices, and I'll just keep taking this up until I get to put a ton of creatures into play and kill you. I mean, the token strategy just seems very good in general because it beats the Liliana strategy. Yeah. They're, they're like, Liliana, you're like, oh, I've you know, got a bunch of creature tokens. Exactly. It doesn't do that much. And I mean, attacking with that... But that guy suddenly doesn't look so hot. Well, I think he has an Oblivion Ring. Yeah, Oblivion Ring hits you for six. Good old three mana six sixes. I mean, welcome to Magic 2011. <laughs> and is it is that just one of the new things that they're doing? Because there seems to be a lot of creatures that when it attacks, it brings in tokens that are attacking. I mean, there's just a big abundance of them lately, and they never were around before. Well, there's Hero Blade Holds, Geist, and the uh, the three, four, for five green guy. Yeah, I mean, it seems sweet. I mean, it's probably. I mean, it's e when you're designing things, it's easy to be like, oh, this is a cool thing. Let's do lots of this. This is awesome. Sure. And then you know, it kind of fades out after you do it. You get it out of your system. The board is uh, two tokens for Andrew Shroud and a Shrine of Loyal Legions. Along with uh, the plus one plus one vigilance card. Sorry, what's it called? Uh, Intangible virtue. Intangible yeah. virtue. Um, and a, Ge a geist of Saint Traft on Brian Boss's side. Ooh. Brian Boss, uh, no stranger to the Star City Game Circuit, top aided a couple of the uh, open series, both in Legacy and in Standard. So. Guy serves in, and token trades off with it, but uh, gets in four more points of damage, drop Andrew Shroud down to ten. And believe it or on the Shrine, that's huge. Yeah, that, that's a big one. That is a big deal. <laughs> Uh, let's see, so the board, 
kind of cleared out. That that shrine is looking to be a bit going to be a big issue for Brian Boss, but that delivery room wiped it right out. And now Brian is, I think, is probably just going to start retching control of this game. He looks like he's got a handful of action. I see a couple counter spells there, maybe a, a six drop. Mm -hmm. yeah, it doesn't look too great. Notice how Brian kept his curve pretty low. He's got two Sphinxes and two Gideons. But otherwise, I mean, everything is pretty cheap, so he can operate on a uh, on an instant speed axis. Yeah, that's the same. Uh kind of mana that like Cobblade used to have. A lot of people are running the one, two, three, six. One, two, three, and then five and six drop. Right. It works out really well. Yeah, it's almost like it's a new era of magic. People are just doing this all the time. It's like, oh Cobblade works so well, we'll just try this. So there's well, no it's it's how spell. it's how like cards like Liliana and Pr Titans, what they're doing in the format, just like Jason Titans, you see a lot more one, two, five, sixes in index. And blue white's the big one because it it can do that with its mana base because its cards are are just uniquely designed that way. And Forbidden Alchemy comes down. We we'll get Brian a card. Didn't catch what it was. The flipped a, a land. Didn't catch what else was there. I'm curious why he's running Forbidden Alchemy and he's not running like Sun Titan in a flashback. It just seems like a wasted card. Like. Why wouldn't it just be Think Twice? Because you actually generate card advantage off of it, you know what I mean? Well, I mean, I think he wants to put cards in his graveyard for Snapcaster Mage. Yeah... But I, I am I am surprised that he doesn't have Think Twice. Uh, there's Pond, especially because the deck wants to operate on instant speed axis, too. Yeah, I, I don't really like Forbidden Alchemy in this deck. I'm proud he doesn't either. He probably thought it was sweet. Uh, I'm pretty greedy, so I'd have probably played like a swamp or something like that. Just in case. Why not? I don't think it's that greedy, actually. You know, play, you play. Well, then we had a couple swamps. We put Liliana in. Yeah, yeah I know, right? <laughs> if you give a mouse, if you give a moose a muffin, like you give a mouse a cookie, you, you give a, you give a kibbler a dragon. Like these things just happen. All right, there's Gideon Jura. Gideon is uh, going to giddy up and make things hard for Andrew Schrapp. Why is that going to make it difficult? His creatures have vigilance. Yeah, but I mean, it's, I it's, it's Gideon. <laughs> uh, so there's Elspeth numero dos for Andrew. Is it going to be tick up, protect my... Elspeth or make a bunch right, of guys? I have to make a bunch of yeah. guys. Alright, tax Gideon. Gideon down to six counters. But now Brian does have this huge Gideon. Oh, he draws Tay off the top. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's powerful. He just flips it straight up onto the table. And... Serves in for six. We'll drop Andrew Shroud down to four. His board now completely wiped out. Andrew tries his third Elspeth. Brian has the mana leak, and that should be that. Should be headed into game two shortly. Brian untaps. Taps Gideon, carefully draws his card, <laughs> and we'll choose to activate Gideon and attack. Wait, the game isn't over? I don't think we have life totals correct. I, I, I would guess not. <laughs> Alright, All now Andrew can see it's close enough, close enough. Yeah, that, I mean, that game was pretty much. Alright, so last time right. we saw Andrew, he surprised everyone. We need equity day judgment. This time, the bigger blue white control deck's like, no, I'm gonna day you. <laughs> Hit you with my Planeswalker. Let's look at the sideboarding here for Andrew Stratt. What do you think you'd do here? Uh, he doesn't have much that he wants in this matchup. Maybe Sword of Feast and Famine, uh, Oblivion Ring and Naturalize are potential. But that's about it. Like, Oh, well, that is Naturalize. I thought it was Nevermore from over here. Yeah, Naturalize, I guess. Yeah, Naturalize. Yeah, so, I mean, he's he's going to have to take the beat down in this matchup. Maybe bring in that Oblivion Ring. Um... <coughs> Other than that, there's not a lot there. Looking over at Brian Boss's sideboard, uh, third day of judgment, or it will be coming in for sure. Uh, dismember, fourth dismember, I could see that. I don't I don't actually think Dismember is that good in this matchup. Like, he has Hero and the Lunark, but other than that, it's all tokens. Dismember sure. probably doesn't seem that great in this matchup. I mean, it's interesting because I think you want to keep Summon. Question you is, keep a couple in, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. So, I mean, if you want to bring in... Do you want to bring in Talon Reinforcements? Like, no. The way I approach this matchup is I approach it like... Uh, I want Counter Magic, and I want Mass Removal, and I don't want to get far behind from the token. So I don't want Talon Reinforcement because if they have... I want to make their Anthems n not that useful. Because, like, 
you can't play that game with them. You make tokens, I make tokens. Oh, you have an anthem. Then your card's just bad. So I want to play this matchup uh, controlling his uh, Shrine of Loyal Legions and controlling his Elspeths and controlling his heroes. Everything else just doesn't really do that much. And so you're going to want your Day of Judgments. You're going to want... Uh, what's that card? Sesso Purge in Cyborg? Yeah. I think Sesso Purge is actually a card that's underrated right now because it kills Liliana, kills Grave Titan. Like, I think N- not it's in this matchup. Cyborg. Yeah, not in this <laughs> matchup. Do not bring it against a green and white deck. Yes. I don't think anyone would ever do that. I would, I would probably get called an idiot on Twitter before anyone would actually put it in. Although, I did in Limited. I read it in Deathmark against Blue Black once, and it was awesome. Explain. <laughs> so, uh, I was playing Sealed, and... He had called the grave in his or uh, in, uh, rise from the grave in his deck, and like we, I, we played the first two games, like they both went super, we're both like super controlling dice. The game went super long, and both times all that mattered was him rise from the graving my vengeful archon. So I boarded in death mark, and then when he rise from the grave in game three, I death marked my vengeful archon. No way. Yeah, that's absurd. Yeah, it's pretty insane, right? I could just see boarding out the Vengeful Archon. <laughs> no, but that's like, it's just insane. Like, if I have it, I, it's like really good for me. But like, he's, he, he went like Doombladed, Untap, Rise. Yeah. And then I, she shipped back, and I just had the most gigantic grin on my face. He's like, oh, you're just going to kill it? I'm like, no, 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 you don't understand what's about to happen. <laughs> like, death mark. <laughs> Level me. It's <laughs> uh, probably like one of the most ridiculous yet. It's effective pretty. sideboarding things I think I've ever done. Yeah, uh, I think he's gonna bring dissipate. I like I like counter magic from I mean, Brian Boss. He's gonna be like Elspeth Tyrell. It's, that's like a big card. To Elspeth deal with. shrines. Yeah, like you just those are the cards you want to control in this matchup. Uh, so. And just gonna cut off his day of judgments, right? I, I I would assume that that's what's coming out. Bring in two obliterate or bring in two swords and obliterate, an obliterate or something. Maybe a second oblivion ring if there's something else he wants to take out. Take out a dismember potentially. Dismember doesn't seem particularly exciting here. So we'll see. Uh, see what happens. How do you feel about, feel about Doomed Traveler in this deck? I mean, pretty bad. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at Andrew's list. It's like it just seems it's like, it's like the one card that stands card. out to me. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't like it. I mean, I I don't know what you replace it with, but that I I don't want to play with that card. I agree. Let's see what else he's got there. Uh, according to Jarvis U, well, uh, the, the well man Jarvis U, love me Jarvis U, uh, says that uh, former Moto Ringer Nicotine Jones built uh, Andrew Shroud's deck. I don't know if you've ever played against Nicotine Jones. Nicotine Jones? Yeah, I, I, I've seen him before on Moto. I have Jones for Nicotine before, but I've never played against Nicotine Jones. <laughs> uh, well, he built, built Andrew Shroud's deck, so... Interesting. We'll see how it plays out uh, in game two after things change up. Not that much, really. I mean, Brian gets an extra day. Andrew loses some dead cards, but yeah, I think a lot of it stays the same. All right, players grab their opening hands, and let's see what they got going on. Both players, players off to the races. All right. Land go from Andrew. Land go from Brian Boss. Both are fast lands. All right. Honor the pure, setting up for token enabling. Brian Boss is going to get to get two mana into play, have a mana leak up, and no pressure. That's it's always a good feeling. Yeah. Oh yeah. Whenever you reach turn two, you have that mana leak. That shows you how insanely warping that card can be. Mm-hmm. And it's insanely powerful. Man Leak might be one of the most underrated, in the, just on pure power cards. People play it all the time, but like you know, I don't think it's underrated. It it's not underrated, but just like if you if some people ask you, you know, what, what's like some of the most powerful cards in M12, I don't think many people are going to say Man Leak. I mean, people play it a lot, but I don't know if they necessarily correlate its power. I mean, it's not in M12, so or never mind. Sorry, I was I was thinking Preordain. I I actually got ahead of myself and I was <laughs> switched the word to Preordain. <laughs> It's like, it's not an M12, but this is a very awkward situation, yeah. man. Uh, all right, well, there's some Forbidden Alchemy on Brian Boss's part. 
Brian Boss did not counter the two tokens. I'm curious why not. Well, I think it's because he probably expected Andrew to untap and do something else, so he wanted to be able to counter it then, but that's not quite the case. What would he want? I like using my counter spells and make them play another spell, because now you have that pressure and Andrew can just sit on that, and then if he ever dazed, he gets Elspeth into play. Like, this is a turn where he wouldn't have to deal with an Elspeth. Unless he can't deal with the hero, but no, I don't know. I, I think I counter that. Like yeah, I, I'd four power. That. And uh, four flying power, unless you can't just snap cast or yeah. block. I mean, if you're playing a token deck, you really should get some tokens. No offense to Andrew Shroud, but I mean. I mean, I, I, think, I think there is offense. I think so. You should have your tokens. You should be prepared. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I like trophies. Nothing wrong with that. Just like, I mean, what, he keeps attacking with a trophy, though, all day long until he, like, wins a trophy. I guess there's some mentality there, yeah. right? All Especially right. if you have different kinds of tokens. So, Drago, after we got uh, a couple 1 1s into play, Brian Boss is going to go for a ponder, trying to find some much needed answers to uh, these tokens and the cards that are scary in Andrew's hand. The problem that Brian Boss is in right now is if he taps out to Day of Judgment or do anything that way, Andrew's going to slam something big, something scary. It's probably a Planeswalker, it's probably Elspeth. Brian playing the, uh, the nice Lauren version of Ponder. Picks up a card. I need to get myself some lore when Oblivion Rings too. I don't own any of those anymore. Oh, man. Yeah, Circle of Sugar and a Word of Forbiddance. What? That's the flavor text. Oh, what does it say? A Circle of Sugar and a Word of Forbiddance. Which is slightly different than the uh, Lara flavor text. Um, this is back to Andrew Shrouds. On to pier number two. <laughs> Man, that midnight, letting that midnight hunting resolve not looking so good now. Yeah. Now Andrew has plenty of mana to pay for whatever. Brian Boss can't be happy about the situation. He does have Gideon in his hand, so he can potentially knock off one of those tokens next turn, but... He's going down to six. Yeah, he's going to be chopped down to six life. But and now he's thinking of mana leaking this? Or is he double leaking? I mean, he doesn't really have a good way to deal with Honor of the Pure, so, I mean, leaking it, I mean, you can Oblivion Ring, I suppose, but leaking it twice isn't unreasonable. Now he lets, what? He just wants to time walk Andrew Shy away for the rest of his turn. Doesn't want to get Midnight Haunting to end step, I guess. Sure, I guess the Haunting would be bad. Never want to be haunted. All right, one, two, three, four, five. Gideon Jura is just going to go minus two, kill a token. Yeah, for sure. Should be on four loyalty. Yeah, and Andrew, Andrew's quick to point that out. Yeah. I'm not going to deal with six and lose again. I know you know it's plus two, but it doesn't start on eight. Now, now Andrew has Elspeth in his hand. He can drop. Still a day. He has multiple day, I think. Yeah, I like how the guy that needs the days, the other guy has two. <laughs> <laughs> Could, could just cast them, I mean, jeez. All right, well, there's Elspeth. I mean, that's definitely correct. The question is, and, it, is you, and you make three tokens also. Yes. But the question is if you attack Gideon or not here. Yes. No. I don't think you do. No. He's, he's going to plus two it next turn anyway, right? Yeah. Well, potentially he might not. Like, if he has a day judgment, he won't. He'll be swinging with it. Well, sh sure, sure. I mean, I, oh, he just texted me. Either way, you want to get the damage through, right? Because yeah. if he goes plus two next turn, you have to attack with everything that's going to die anyway. Um, but Andrew just opts to attack the uh, Gideon. It is tempting when there's Gideon on the table to fight <laughs> it. That guy has ended mini image. All right, so Day of Judgment takes out the creature top. Gideon's going to kill Elspeth. Oh, wow, this is a brutal turnaround for, An for Brian. Same Bob. thing that happened last game. Yep. A good start by Andrew, but... So Elspeth, another Elspeth can drop. I think Andrew has one. All right, well, there's Gaviny Township, which is certainly good, but... A little late. That would have been nice when uh, when he played that Honor of the Pier. Yeah. It's kind of a cool card, though. I mean, it's interesting to see all these new lands played. We've seen Nephilia Drownyard. We've seen everyone played today. But the red-black one. But the red-black one, since the Oblivion. Which may see some play eventually. As like a one of. I don't think so. You don't think so? No. Not even as a one of? I mean, all the planeswalkers are bigger. Like, you can't really do much with it. You just pay six and deal two. It's sweet and limited. I haven't limited it. It's awesome. 
Was it? Yeah, it was really good. Like, I just got into, like, a board stall, and it was like, all right, yeah. two you, two you, two you. It was like a double pinger. All right, Brian Boss serves for six, chopping Andrew's life, Andrew's life total down to 14. All right, Andrew needs to top deck some some actual creature spells. Let me see some more days. Oh, there's a shrine. It's not an actual creature spell. Do you spell. wrath? I would probably wrath. Like, it's not going to do anything for you. You just want to get counters on your shrine, right? Yeah. It's kind of, kind of hilarious, but it has to be done. Do you wrath nothing? <laughs> A legitimate game question. Like, I watched AJ today. It was so funny. He had two 1-1 one, one Sun Titans in play. One was an image, one was a Sun Titan. And he goes, attack you for two, get two lands back, uh, wrath myself, bring them back, bring both back, get two more, or get another <laughs> land. It's just so stupid. Are they 1-1s? One, All right. He catches the wrath, puts a counter on it. Oh, man. I like that play. I mean, I like the play. It's just, it's just funny. I don't know if I've ever seen that happen. Just rat, wrath cast, do nothing. Or, you know, kill no creatures. Probably maybe a Mind Slaver. Maybe you haven't seen it. I bet Mind Slaver is the only time this might have ever happened. Sure. I mean, I, I mean I'm sure this situation has happened sometime before. True. But just, I haven't seen it. I've seen a lot of magic in the past year, let me tell you. Snapcaster Mage. It's going to flashback that Forbidden Alchemy. So that, that's a way you can reuse your Forbidden Alchemy. Get some value off from that way. Also, if you re reuse your ponders, do all kinds of cool little things. All right, so let's see what he does now. Still playing spells. Oh, ho, 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 divine offering. Sorry about that, buddy. Shrine of Loyal Legion's down, and Brian Boss is firmly in control. The town of Gavany is being raided. <laughs> I think that yeah, those dissipate too, so Brian even has counter magic back up. He has three ink bob next side, or necklaces, I suppose. So not the hard way. All right, tons of ink moths, everything's coming in. It's playing the game, it's like, yeah, I gotcha. <laughs> I got all these things. Taps a lot of mana for a huge Micaeus the Lunark. Dissipate. And that is, Brian Boss takes it down 2 to 0. Both times we thought Brian might be in a losing position, but does what control decks do best and just battle back. So I think Billy Moreno said it best. Control is all about losing and losing and losing until you finally start winning. <laughs> and uh, Brian put a, on a perfect show of that there. Defeating Andrew Strout pretty definitively. Yeah, that was, that was a pretty interesting match. I mean, I, I still love Andrew's deck, though. That deck is sweet. 